I'm finally doing it. I'm finally filming a plant tour. It has been a hot minute since my last one. We're actually coming up to a year that we've lived here, which is so, so crazy. Um, and I've basically been procrastinating making this video the whole time because, well, a couple of reasons. You know when you move into a new space and things just never feel ready, it never feels complete, and you just keep waiting until the next thing is done, the next project is done, until you've rearranged however many times. Well, I definitely got stuck in a loop of that, and I've also accumulated about 100 more houseplants since my last tour, which couldn't tell you how that happened. But the more plants that I have, the more intimidated I get by filming this video. So you know what we're not gonna do today? Stress. We're just gonna keep this casual plant tour vibes. Hope that that sounds good to you. We're just, yeah, we're just gonna relax, hang out, check out all these plants. I'm gonna be showing you every single plant that I have in my collection. If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Fern. I live on Vancouver Island in Canada and I've been collecting plants for about the past five years. Um, I live in a small two bedroom house. However, I am privileged to have some large south facing windows in my main living space. So that's where the majority of my collection is. I have a pretty wide variety of plants in my collection. Lots of aeroids, lots of Hoya, um, some carnivorous plants, some begonias, some succulents and cactus. A really good mix, honestly. I'm really interested in trying out all different types of plants, so um, yeah. I post a new planty video every Monday and Thursday with the occasional bonus Saturday upload, so if you are looking for houseplant related content to watch, I recommend that you hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to like this video since you're down there subscribing anyways. All right, without further ado, we're just gonna get started because we have a lot of plants to get through. Okay, so I suppose we're just gonna get started in the living room here, and I'm going to begin with one of my favorite plants which is my philodendron Florida ghost. She lives way, way up here on top of a cupboard. She's basically at the ceiling um, and somehow defying all odds, she's just living her best life up there. I'm gonna grab her down for you. Okay, so as you can see, she is just trailing and just doing her own thing, honestly. Um, I know that this is a climbing philodendron and you can grow this beautif beautifully on a pole and I do have another one on a pole that we'll see later but um, this one I thought it was just kind of fun to just let her grow wild like I've really been enjoying how she looks up there and she just kind of cascades down beautifully and she's still giving me like incredible growth considering that she's trailing and that she does not get much light at all up there. Um, we have a new leaf right there as well. Yeah, this is honestly one of my favorite plants. She's in self-watering pots in pond, so that's definitely what's keeping her thriving up there because I would not climb up often enough to keep her watered if it wasn't for this pot. Here's a kind of overview of the living room, by the way. So when it is sunny out, these plants do get a pretty good amount of light. I do have a couple of grow lights in here as well. And yeah, you can see the Florida ghost up there on top of the cupboard growing out like crazy. In fact, here's an overview of the whole kind of space before I start. This is the main living space, dining room and living room combined. And that wall is south facing, like I said. So. It's really nice, especially having the stacked windows. That was something that I was so excited about and I still am so excited about having. Down here, we have one of my favorite plants in my whole collection, if not my top favorite plant in my whole collection. And that is my beautiful Monstera Thai constellation. As you can see, she is absolutely stunning, which is of course one of the reasons that I love her. But this is also a really sentimental plant to me as well. This was the first rare plant that I bought, like, you know, five, almost five years ago at this point. And um, we have had just such a tumultuous journey together. This plant got root rot. Oh my goodness, I don't even know how many times. I have a whole playlist on my channel documenting this plant since it was a tiny, tiny baby. Um, and yeah, we've just, we've been, we've been through it together. 
and we've come out the other side because now she's thriving, living her best life. I have no problems with root rot anymore, thankfully. And um, yeah, she's looking amazing and every new leaf just gets more beautiful than the last one. This is the newest leaf on the, there's two plants in here because I ended up propagating it at one point, but this is the newest leaf on the larger plant in here. And yeah, it is just so, so beautiful. She does get supplemental light from a grow light. And I actually have a recent video on my channel going through like detailed, going through all of the grow lights in my home. Um, so if you're curious about any of the lighting that I have set up, I'll link that video in the description box. Beside her, we have my philodendron tortum, which is getting huge. And to be quite honest, I don't really know what to do with her. <laughs> um, she's at the top of her bamboo stake now. I don't know whether I'm gonna propagate or what, but she just put out this leaf. And um, there is a second plant in here that's, oh yeah, right there, putting out a small new leaf. I really like this plant. It's different and fun and it works kind of well in that spot where I have it right now. So um, yeah, maybe I'll just change that out for a taller bamboo stake. I really like the way that these plants all kind of look together in this little area. On top of the Millsbow wide cabinet here, we have a Peperomia Hope. I really like this one. I don't have many Peperomia in my collection, but this is one that I really do enjoy just because of the round foliage. I love trailing plants as well. I need to repot or propagate this or something soon because it's getting a little um, worse for wear, but that's okay. <laughs> She's still cute. Okay, so next is my favorite Calathea of all time, and that is the Calathea Warshwixii, also called the Jungle Velvet Calathea because it is really soft to the touch and it has kind of like a nice velvety sheen to the leaves. It is just so, so pretty. These can get quite massive, um, so that's the goal with mine. This has been a project plant with me. I've actually had it for quite a while now, like probably a few years, and as you can see, it's not very big. So um, I'm working on it. I've recently converted it to pawn and she's doing pretty well. So um, yeah, we are just gonna continue to, to grow her out. Beside that, we have my only plant living in Lekka and that is my philodendron mame. I find this philodendron to be very prone to spider mites. Um, and as soon as she dries out is when they tend to descend. So I decided to pop her into semi-hydro. I also found this to be a really thirsty philodendron. So just drying out was not a good thing for her, but she seems to be loving the Lekka life, which was kind of a surprise to me because I've really struggled with Lekka in the past, but it seems to be going well. This is actually a brand new leaf that she's just put out. It's still hardening off, but how cute is that? So I'm really excited to see how this plant continues to grow for me. I have it in this um, rectangular self-watering planter because she is a crawler. And yeah, these are so stunning, especially when they are healthy. <laughs> so I'm trying to get mine to a good place. This right here is my silver cloud syndapsis. And this is probably one of my, this, well, this probably is my favorite syndapsis just based on the amount of silver it has. I think that it is so beautiful. I love how the foliage is kind of sparkly. I don't know how much the camera will pick up, but um, yeah, it's just gorgeous. This can get larger leaves as well, like similar to the Exotica, how those can really size up nicely. I find that these are pretty, pretty good size as well. So I really love that about it. This right here is my Monstera Albo. I have a few of these because I cut mine up in an attempt to get more variegation. As you can see, it's a pretty low variegation specimen. Um, and I haven't really had a lot of success <laughs> with that. I do have some other cuttings of this plant that you'll see later, but yeah, she's just kind of hanging out there and I just kind of keep an eye on her to see if I'm gonna get a leaf that has some decent variegation. I recently cut her back, so I'm kind of waiting for the new growth points to activate. Tucked behind here, we have my beautiful Hoya Croniana Super Silver. I love this one so much because, I mean, obviously it has gorgeous silver foliage and it grows so quickly and it's basically a constant bloomer for me. I wish I had some open blooms to show you right now, but I think we just have buds. Um, yeah, this one is getting closer, but she, yeah, she blooms all the time. I've already had a few 
batches of blooms from her this year. There's another peduncle that's gonna be coming in soon too. Oh my goodness, another one here too. Yeah, she loves to bloom. This is actually a bit of a silver plant little corner here because I have several silver plants in this area. Another one is this Alocasia heterophylla or dragon's breath. This is one of my favorite Alocasia. This is actually a really big wish list plant for me last year and I was able to get this in a trade from my friend Dakota, but um, I love the color. I love the leaf shape. It is just so cool. These can get pretty big too and they just look so epic. So yeah, I think this is the newest leaf. You can see it's even getting like bigger and pointier with each leaf. So. Yeah, a really, really cool alocasia, and it's actually super easy going as well, which is just amazing. This pole that we have happening right here has my philodendron burl marks fantasy on it. This is a plant that I was actually kind of considering giving up on because I was really struggling to get a nice leaf on it, but I ended up extending the pole once more, and it looks like I am finally getting a nice healthy leaf. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it doesn't look too. The other ones just kept getting stuck and I was having to cut them off and it was just quite an ordeal. But we are getting one that looks really, really good right there. I started feeding this with Calmeg recently, so I think that maybe that helped. I don't know, but I'm glad that she sorted herself out a little bit. And I can't wait to see that leaf unfurl. I've been watching it like a hawk. She was growing really beautifully before. You can see down here, I love the shingling habit of this plant and just how short the petioles are and how like flush the leaf is. Like it lays super, super flat if you can see that. So yeah, it is just gorgeous. And then it kind of went downhill, but I think we're coming back. Down here is an alocasia that is on the struggle bus a little bit. And it's been on the struggle bus basically since I got it several months ago. This is an alocasia antoro velvet. Oh, I figured out the botanical name for it the other day. Chienlii or something like that. Um, I'll have all the names on the screen, of course, but I was so excited about this plant because it is a really dark leafed fuzzy alocasia. Like it's very furry, honestly, like it's super, super soft to the touch. Um, so two traits that I love in plants. I love dark foliage. I love plants that are hairy. I love silver foliage as well, of course. But um, yeah, I was so excited about this. After I got it, I heard that it was a difficult alocasia and I was like, uh-oh. Um, and yeah, <laughs> so far it has been difficult for me, unfortunately. So we're still kind of figuring each other out, but yeah. Next, we're gonna dive into my Millsbow Wide Cabinet. This cabinet is a bit of a hot mess right now. Uh, it really needs to be just rearranged. There's a lot of plants in here that are kind of in rehab mode or they just need to be propagated or restarted or repotted or something. They're just, it's not my favorite uh, planty area or <laughs> setup right now, but of course I'm gonna show you the plants in there anyways. There are some plants that are doing pretty well in there too. Okay, first one is my Anthurium clarinervium. She is actually a little cutie. Um, this used to be living in the office, but I moved it to the cabinet probably six weeks ago-ish. And she's given me this nice new leaf right here. So yeah, I think she's happy in there. Next, we have my Anthurium forgetii. And this is another plant of mine that has just been, it's been with me for a while and we've been on a journey and a half together. It's now currently potted into pond in this self-watering pot. This was actually just repotted like a day ago, so we'll see how we do. But um, yeah, I love the Forgetti Eye. This is one of my favorite in Ethereum, but for some reason it's hard for me to grow and I think that's because it really does not appreciate when I underwater it. I've had this plant at the point before where it was actually quite large and beautiful, but as soon as I'm behind on watering, which I frequently am, I'm a chronic underwaterer, um, as soon as I'm behind on underwatering, it would just start to crisp and not look very nice. So that's why I decided to opt for self-watering this time and we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, there's actually three separate plants potted in here together so um yeah i'm just hoping that i'm going to be able to maintain some nice growth on this now that it's in self-watering um we do have some nice new leaves though this is a new leaf that's still coming in and then this one which is facing backwards for some reason but it is very cute look at that 
yeah, love it. Anthurium are definitely a type of plant that I tend to struggle with. I do have quite a few of them in my collection, but I feel like I'm very much in like trial and error and like learning mode with them. I mean, I am with all my plants really, but especially Anthurium, I just like don't know what the heck is going on with them half the time. We have my Hoya Crassi Petiolata Splash, which needs to be chopped and repotted. I have another one as well that I'm probably gonna combine um, with this one but she's really cute. I love the uh, leaf, the splashing on this one. So, so pretty with the dark veins, stunning. Next is my Hoya Erythrina and she's looking a little bit chaotic. This is kind of one that needs to be um, mm, maybe chopped and propped or something in the near future, but she's a very good grower for me. Um, this Hoya, I really would love to get sun stressed one day. I just, I have a hard time sun stressing plants. Um, it doesn't really happen for me under grow lights. And I mean, I probably could get sun stressing on my Hoya in the summertime in my south facing windows. So maybe I'll move her there pretty soon for the spring and see what happens. But these sun stress so incredibly beautifully, they get a really dark leaf. And I think that that would be so cool to see. So. Yeah, hopefully one day. This is one of my plants that I am most excited to see grow this year. It is my Syngonium Chia Pence Variegated. Um, I've only had this for, well, I guess I've had it for like three months now. Oh my goodness, time is flying. Um, but she is at a bit of a standstill, unfortunately. This was an import and this is the first leaf it put out after like while it was prop, or not propagating really, like recovering. Um, and obviously it has some damage, it doesn't look amazing. And I've since had her potted up and put in the cabinet and everything, but she still just hasn't really done much. So I'm just kind of waiting to see the next leaf on her. This one I'm just obsessed with. I love the colors on it, so minty. Um, so yeah, fingers are crossed that she's gonna do something. She has healthy looking roots in here. So I'm not worried, I'm just, you know, just waiting. This is my Hoya Kalimantan that I recently repotted in my last Hoya repot video. We actually put her into um, a semi-hydro setup with Pond, gave her a trellis and everything, and she seems to be settling in really nicely. I love this one. The leaves are so pretty. Yeah, stunning. This is my Alocasia. Um, Odora Aurea, I believe. Um, this used to be called Gagiana, but I guess that they were reclassified to Odora. This is the newest leaf, like look at that. Oh my goodness, the variegation, like are you kidding me? This is a really fun one because it is Polaroid variegation, so the leaves come in just kind of all looking green, and then over time it develops to, um, to the point where you can see the variegation, and yeah, it's just so, so pretty. I love Aurea variegation, I do. So I'm really excited to watch this one grow. These can get really big. So, oh my goodness, look at her roots coming out there. Yeah, this is a really fun one. She's gonna have to come out of the cabinet soon too because she's obviously just gonna outgrow it. There's a couple babies sprouting out behind here. Yeah, this is a very, very easygoing alocasia. If you have been eyeing one, I really recommend them. This is one of the only orchids in my collection. It is a Bulbophyllum longissimum or something like that. Um, I chose this one because of the blooms. They are so, so cool. They look like little fish or something. I'm just, oh, I'm absolutely obsessed with them. If I can get this to bloom, I will be so, so happy. I think I'm gonna be repotting it this spring because it's just getting really, like it looks really tight in there. Um, so I have the Molly's orchid mix that I think I'm going to, um, try to, oh, I have the name tag right here. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So I would like to try to repot this soon, but I am very nervous about doing anything with this plant. This is a new leaf coming in. I'm very nervous about doing anything with this plant because I'm just so unfamiliar with orchids and I would be very sad if I lost this one because like I said, I just really want to see it bloom. But yeah, so far it's been doing fine. I've had it for quite a while now. I got this in the fall. This right here is my comeback queen, my strawberry begonia. Um, this is actually not a begonia at all. I have the botanical name on the screen, but um, that's the common name for it. She, I honestly thought that this plant was gonna croak 
a little while ago, but I repotted her and she has totally rooted up in the pot and put out a whole bunch of babies. Look at all of her babies. Like, oh my goodness, this plant is just so, so cute. I love pink plants. And do you know what this reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of the variegated string of hearts. Like it's like the same kind of colors, but much bigger leaves. So you can appreciate the variegation and the colors and everything even more. I got this for about $3 at the grocery store and it's been one of my best grocery store finds. I think that this is so underrated. Like. It's one of those common plants that to me looks like a plant that people would pay a lot of money for, you know? And it's just so cool that she <laughs> sends out all of these babies. Yeah, I'm really obsessed with her lately and she has been loving living in the cabinet. As soon as I put her in there, she just went crazy. So yeah, strawberry begonia, variegated strawberry begonia. This one is actually another comeback queen and that is my Hoya sigillatus. I I don't even remember why I cut this up. It was quite some time ago, like honestly, maybe maybe eight or nine months ago that I cut this up, rooted the cuttings. I think maybe it was, I think it just wasn't really growing and I decided to cut it up. Um, and I wasn't really sure if the cuttings were even gonna make it because some of them were looking pretty rough for a little bit, but um, she recently has started putting out a new vine and some new leaves. Look at those little baby leaves. So I was really excited to see that. This is a just a really different Hoya and I've had it for quite a long time. So it is kind of sentimental to me. Um, I probably got this, I probably got it in 2020, honestly. And it grew to be a pretty long, like nice plant. Um, so I'm glad that we're kind of starting over, I guess. And I get to watch it grow again. And yes, it's in a soup container, so I need to find a cover pot for it. A lot of my plants need cover pots. That's something that I'm really, like the past year, I've really been trying to focus on buying pots for my plants, but we have a long way to go just because I have so many plants. This is another really cool, unique kind of plant that I have living in my cabinet. And it is my Halo Mykins which is a type of variegated micans. And it's quite cool because the leaves can be very slender on this gal. And the variegation, like it typically has the white, like the halo effects along the outside of the leaves, but it does kind of vary leaf from leaf, leaf to leaf of what it looks like. And it has like darker parts and yeah, it's just, it's really, really cool she also loves living in the cabinet it's grown like a weed um i was actually gifted this by my friend natasha who also now has a youtube channel so go check out her channel is this the one i showed already this is my favorite leaf on her right now it's so so stunning anyways i'm gonna be chopping this up and repotting all the cuttings together to create like a bushy little pot and i just haven't gotten around to it yet which is kind of my thing you know i'm i say i'm gonna do something and then i do it in six to 12 months. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but kind of. I do have a couple of Nepenthes living in here. We have my Nepenthes, I always forget the name of this one, Fusca right here, which is, uh, I mean, it's doing okay. It's definitely doing better than it was before. Um, this is probably the biggest picture on him. Yeah, just a little baby. I think that I'm going to be repotting these soon because these little um, pots just dry out so, so fast. And then this is my Nepenthes glandulifera, which I like because it is hairy. And like I said, I love hairy plants. We have a couple of like decent sized pitchers on this one. These definitely were neglected for a little while. So they haven't grown a ton since I've had them, but I've been really on top of it lately. So, I'm hoping that they're gonna start looking a little bit better soon, but yeah. I think carnivorous plants are so fun, so I'm always just like curious to try different ones out. And then I'll bring you in to show you what we have in the back of the cabinet here. Okay, so in the baggie here, we have Piper Sylvaticum, which was an import that did not fare well, and it's just kind of been in recovery mode for the past few months, honestly. I have not opened this up in a while, so I'll need to check in on her soon, but um, yeah, I mean, it looks good. Like I imagine it has roots because I don't think the leaves would have lived this long if it didn't. So I'll keep you updated on her shortly. 
this another kind of sad plant here is my oh my goodness this is actually really sad um this is my alocasia zebrina reticulata which i was so excited to grow and i don't think i it's done for i think that the quorum is still healthy and i might even get a new leaf before this one completely perishes we'll see but i don't know why this has been such a challenge for me I have not been able to figure it out. And yeah, I, I just, pff, I don't even know, man. I repotted into mollies and I thought that for sure it was gonna be happy in that mix because all of my alopecias love this mix, but it still just continued to throw a fit for me. And now this is where we're at. So hopefully one day I have a nice, big, beautiful alopecia Zebrina reticulata, but as for today, it is not happening for us, folks. This right here is my kind of sad looking um, philodendron Paraiso Verde. It actually grows like fine. It really needs to be repotted, but it grows fine for me. Um, like it's always putting out a new leaf. It's just so hard to get the variegation. And I knew that going into this, I really knew that because I've heard so many people complain about how this loses its variegation because it's temperature dependent. Um, obviously we are just coming out of winter here soon. So there was, it was chilly. There is not a lot of heat to promote variegation. Um, so we'll see what happens in the summertime, but oh, I would just love to have that like minty modeled variegation on this, but unfortunately I'm just getting green leaves like this. Um, but you know, we'll see. I have high hopes for the summer. This is my Hoya, oh my goodness, it looks kind of unwell, but this is my Hoya um, fungi, which I've had for a very long time and it needs to be repotted. <laughs> it's definitely been like neglected. Oh my goodness, is this a new vine? That's so cute. It's definitely been neglected. Um, yeah, this is one that I probably am gonna chop up and this is actually quite a big leaf on it here. Probably one that I'm gonna chop up and restart because it just, it deserves better than this janky setup that it's on. <laughs> that right there is my Epipremnum Panatum Marble. Also going to be chopping, propping, and repotting that soon because it's just been neglected on that tiny little pole there for quite some time now. I really wanna see that size up and climb though. Right here is my Hoya, I don't even know what this is. I totally forgot the ID on it. Is it? Incrasada, maybe? I think Incrasada, but I'm not actually sure. Anyways, it's doing well. Grows like a weed, and um, yeah, not much else to say about her. Right here is my mess of a Begonia amphioxus. I really need to pot this up. It has been living in water for so, so long, and now it's just growing all over the place. It's trailing, it's blooming, like there's so many just flowers everywhere making a mess on this. Yeah, it's my bad. I should have repotted that so, so long ago, like eight months ago, but I did not. And here we are with a little like propagation bush of amphioxus. I think that's it for this cabinet. So I'm just gonna put all the plants back in and then we'll move along. Okay, so we're slowly making our way across the room and now I'm gonna show you all of the plants that live in front of this window. Starting up here, we have my variegated Hoya Bella. I actually recently moved this to this spot because it was just kind of growing like crazy on my plant shelf, but I think that it looks really cute hanging in this basket. So I have both of both the um, outer variegated as you can see right there. Maybe where's a better one? Mm, it honestly doesn't look amazing right now, this plant. And we have the inner variegated. I think I prefer the inner variegated, although it grows much slower than the outer variegated, but it is just so pretty. And look, we even have a little peduncle on the end there. There's actually quite a few peduncles on this right now, but this is definitely like the juiciest one and a cute little mushroom charm on there. I'm actually going to take down the rest of the plants and just show you here because it's so backlit, it's hard to see. This is my Hoya Walliniana UT152. And if you're looking for a Hoya that grows really quickly, blooms all the time, and also has the ability to sun stress really beautifully, this is your gal. 
I got this as quite a small plant and it has just grown into this massive hanging basket. Um, this actually used to be double the size as well, um, but unfortunately half the plant rotted off and I had to remove it out of the pot a couple of months ago. But the other half of the plant is still doing amazing. She actually just went through a really big bloom period. Um, she had a whole bunch of active blooms on her, unfortunately. I don't think any of them are active right now, but she does still have peduncles that are um, slowly developing blooms. Of course, I can't find any right now, but you best believe she'd be blooming all the time. And yeah, she's just, she's really, really cute. This does get nice and purple in the summertime. Um, the parts that are in, the parts that get sun. I had this on my deck last year and she was loving life. So yeah, such a beautiful and easy going Koya. Except for when it rotted, oh, there's one. That one, they'll be coming, they'll be coming in. Okay, next we have one of my OG plants. And that is one of my first Hoya. Honestly, one of the like original just plants in general in my plant collection when I first started really getting into plants. This is my Hoya Crimson Queen. And look at her. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> stunning. Like I cannot deal with how full she is. Like, oh my goodness. Talk about a bushy woman. I love this Hoya so, so much. It's a really common plant. You can find this at the big box store. Um, it has beautiful outer variegation. As you can see, the Crimson Princess has inner variegation and the Crimson Queen has outer variegation. And the little saying that I've heard to help remember that is that the queen wears the crown and the princess wears the gown. Crown, like outside, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, but... Um, yeah, this is the queen and she does actually have quite a few just all white vines and she hangs onto the white leaves for quite some time as well. The new growth comes in pink, especially when she's getting high light. This leaf still is kind of pink. It's so, so pretty. Oh my goodness. My only beef with this plant is that she's never bloomed for me, which really sucks. It is like, this is probably the Hoya that I want to see bloom the most just because she's one of my absolute favorites. I've had her for so, so long. Um, the, I mean, there's other Hoya that I have in my collection that I would say have like, you know, maybe a more exciting bloom or a cooler bloom, but the, I, I will say these blooms are still really beautiful, but um, just the fact that she's such a big plant, I, I just want to see some flowers on her, but she's taking her time. I don't know why she doesn't want to flower for me. She's obviously quite a mature plant, but yeah, she just, she doesn't want to do it. And I guess I'm just going to have to be okay with that. She did give me a peduncle at one point. It's right here. It's like not doing anything though. It's just hanging out there. Okay, and then the other two that we have hanging up here are my Hoya Linearis in the UFO planter. This is a really cool um, kind of like upside down planter situation. So that's the top of it. And then the plant comes out the bottom. So I have some Hoya Linearis. This is one of three Hoya Linearis that I have in my home. And honestly, I wasn't sure how this plant was gonna grow because I had never um, used any contraption <laughs> like this before, but it's been doing amazing. Like it's getting super, super long in there. So that's really cool to see. Hoya Linearis is my number one favorite Hoya. So yeah, I just, I love the way that they cascade and the fuzzy little leaves. So, so beautiful. And then next to her is my neglected Anthurium vitrifolium. Um, yeah, she's seen better days. Half of her actually rotted as well a little while ago and I've been propagating those cuttings. Um, so we'll see those in a little bit as well. Right here mounted on the side of the window is my staghorn fern. I don't even know, this is just like the common type. I don't, oh shoot, I don't wanna hurt those leaves. This is just like the common type. I don't even know what it, what it's called though, what the botanical name of this is, but just a regular staghorn fern, I guess. Pretty cool, pretty tolerant of my neglect. So I appreciate that. I mounted it on this piece of cork in like 2020. Don't know if I'm supposed to remount this or like do anything, but um, yeah, this is the only staghorn fern in my collection and I really don't know too much about their care. That This one's just been hanging on hanging with me for, you know, throughout the years. So great. 
Down here, we have my Hoya Wayedii, which I've actually had for many years as well. I got it as a small four inch pot and she's getting so lush. And this Hoya, oh my goodness, the neglect that it has tolerated throughout the years. Um, yeah, it's funny because I was actually considering getting rid of this Hoya. It is quite pretty. Um, I really do like the dark margins that it has. If you can see, it's so backlit. But yeah, look at that. I love the dark margins. That is so, so stunning. Um, but at one point I'd kind of gotten bored of this and I was considering getting rid of it, but I'm really glad that I didn't because I didn't know that the blooms were so cute on this. So when I saw them, I was like, oh my goodness, I need to get my Wyetii to bloom for me. So that is my goal with this plant. It has never bloomed for me before. I don't know what it is with my Hoya. Like I've had a lot of these Hoya for so many years and they just don't give peduncles or blooms or anything for me. And I'm just kind of like, what the heck? Um, like I have my constant bloomers like this gal right here, but some of them are just kind of stubborn and I don't really know why. Anyways, I have a new appreciation for her and she just kind of hangs out in her little south facing spot right there, living her best life. This is just a little propagation bouquet with some different Hoya. Like I said, I'm not really going to go through props in this video. You'll see like the mother plants of these later. This is Hoya Fitchii, which I'm currently trying to grow out because I want it to bloom. Um, I'm, I've been going through like a Hoya bloom obsession lately which you would know if you've been watching my channel for the past little while. But um, yeah, I really want this one to bloom. I do like the foliage on her too. I haven't had her for too, too long, but she's been growing really well for me. And um, yeah, I have no complaints. I just need to stay on top of watering because she's in such a small little pot. But yeah, she's really cute just on her little acrylic trellis there. Right over here, we have my Ficus Shivriana, which is a, a Ficus Elastica variety. And she's actually working on a new leaf, which is quite exciting because she pretty much went dormant over the winter. Like I didn't really get much growth for her, maybe like one or two leaves, but um, she seems to be waking up for spring. So that's really cool to see. She's in a really cute pot, um, which she's outgrowing now at this point. I'm definitely gonna have to repot her this spring, but yeah. This is a really, really pretty variety and one of the only ficus. I think I maybe only have one other ficus in my collection. Um, yeah, I really, really like her. Here is my Monstera Adansonii Indonesian Mint, which was also an import. And um, she's just kind of settling in still, honestly. I am getting a new leaf right there, so that is nice to see but i'm really excited to grow this one out because i really do like the variegation on this um i had the adansonii i love monster adansonii um, and i had the albo variegated version which all reverted for me so i'm excited to have this variety that's not just going to go completely all white on me so really really excited to grow that one out this year Next to her, we have another one that was actually an import plant as well in the same order. That is my Philodendron Domesticum Variegata. Um, and she has been growing like a weed since she came in. First of all, look at some of these leaves. Like so, so pretty. Love the variegation on this plant. Um, yeah, she's basically at the top, top of her pole. So I need to extend this pole soon. Okay, I'll set her down for a second here. She is on a Rousseau pole. The Rousseau, Rousseau plant care poles are my preferred poles to use. They have this front closure here, these little buckles. So it makes it really easy to get your plant in and out, especially for like propagation purposes and stuff like that. And they're also really sturdy um, out of all of the poles like this that I've tried and pretty wide. So it makes them quite stable. Um, definitely my favorite poles that I currently have in my house. I am experimenting with these wire ones over here, but I'm not completely sold yet. So yeah, these three leaves are all new since she's been in my home. This one is still hardening off as you can see, but look at that variegation. Oh my goodness, it is going to be such a pretty one. So this, this plant has been very, very hardy. Like she really just settled in and started growing like nothing even happened, even though she traveled from Indonesia and was in the mail for literally 20 days. Um, but yeah, she's doing great. I can't wait to see her size up. Honestly, I should probably propagate this too so that I can make a nice full plant, but we'll see, we'll see. 
And then we have my philodendron soderoi here, which is just a little, just a little gal. Um, I just potted this up in one of my last videos, so I'm just kind of waiting for her to establish and start to grow out. Could be a soderini, I'm not sure, honestly, we'll see. This is a baby philodendron splendid that I was just kind of hanging onto as a backup. This is some type of Tillandsia air plant. I'm not sure what the variety is, but it's pretty cute and it's bloomed a few times before and the blooms are actually really pretty on these. So I love that. Philodendron um, heteraceum variegated. These are cuttings that need to be potted up. I'm probably gonna get that on a pole. I think I actually might put some of these cuttings in my Wally Grow planter. Um, on my plant wall, which we'll see later. I think that that would be really cool. And this is philodendron Rio cuttings that also need to be potted up soon. And then this is the mother plant that I kept from that one. It's literally just a stump, but I really liked the variegation of the lower leaves on this. So I thought I would keep the, the base and see if it puts out some nice variegated leaves for me. Okay, this is a weird angle, but I thought it would be a good way to show you my um, some of my plants that I'm starting on wire poles. This is kind of just something I'm experimenting with. Um, I think, I have a feeling that I'm still gonna prefer my closed back poles um, compared to this, but I just wanted to try it out and see how stable these are, especially for larger plants. So this is a philodendron splendid that I have on here. This came from my, I used to have a really big, nice philodendron splendid, came down with thrips, I cut it all up into wet sticks and this is what's grown back from that. So this is definitely a plant that has potential to get really big and I know that. So that's why I thought it would be a good candidate to test it out on this style of pole. There's three different plants in here and they are settling in and putting out new leaves and things and growing for me. So I can't wait until this actually starts climbing the pole. Um, for, I mean, to find out how this pole works for me, but also just because I miss having a bigger Splendid in my collection. It is just such a beautiful, beautiful plant. One of my favorite philodendron hybrids. And then next to that is another one that I'm really excited to get climbing and to start sizing up. And that is my Jacinia pothos. So this is uh, basically a yellow. Okay, sorry, I got cut off by my child barking, but yeah, beautiful yellow variegation. These leaves can get really big. And I think that this is actually my first Orium variety of um, Epipremnum that I've ever put on a pole. I also wanna get my Marble Queen on a pole, but I haven't done it yet. So yeah, really, really excited to see how this one does. And she's almost ready to latch on. Like she has one vine that's almost, um, big enough to grow into the pole. So hopefully she'll be climbing soon. I can't wait. And I'm seeing some really nice roots from her in the pot. So that's very satisfying. This is potted into, is this in Molly's? Yeah, this is potted into my Molly's Aeroid mix. I have a lot of plants potted into Molly's Aeroid mix. It's my favorite mix. And then last but definitely not least for this little area is my Alocasia Jacqueline. This is one of my all-time favorite, not even, not only alocasia, but also just one of my all-time favorite plants in general. Oh my goodness, it is such a cool one for so many reasons. Um, obviously the leaf shape is super, super unique, but it has also a very, very cool texture. It's honestly like Velcro. Um, so I love that it has those like coarse hairs on it. It gets huge. Mine's not even, you know, nearly as big as they can get, I'm sure, but it's still so big and just like such an incredible statement plant. I love the petioles also. They have this kind of pattern on them. Really, really cool plant. Like there's just so much to love about it. It is just, it's so unique. I will say she's slow growing, but each leaf is so worth the wait. I can see mine starting to do something down here. It's pushed out this thing, this like little, I guess, growth point recently. So I think I'm gonna get a new leaf soon and I am just so, so excited to see that. I have this little stake kind of thing in here to hold her up and that works really well. Okay, we are moving over to this calyx shelf setup. I'm gonna go throw all the plants on there and it has begun to rain. So it's darkened a little bit if the lighting is different. So starting on the end here, we have my beautiful Hoya Matilde that, this is also one of my like first Hoyas that I, did I just break this leaf off? Oh my gosh, that is so annoying. 
why do I do things like this? Anyways, this is one of my first Hoyas that I ever got. I got it as a small cutting and now she's grown into this big, beautiful plant. I noticed that she's been struggling throughout the winter. Some of her leaves have been yellowing and I've been kind of having a, not an issue with my Hoya, but I guess, well, kind of. A few of them have just like rotted out of nowhere, I think just from lack of light in the winter time. So I noticed some of her leaves were starting to yellow and I got a grow light clipped onto her real quick because I would be quite sad if something happened to this plant. So I'm really hoping that that's gonna help. Um, but yeah, she's been living in low light since, oh my gosh, okay. She's been living in low light since we um, moved in here. And she, for the most part, she does okay in lower light and you get this really beautiful dark foliage on her, which I really like. But the downside to growing in low light, um, besides the potential of rotting your plant, is that you're not likely to get blooms or I guess as many blooms. So she's never bloomed for me, unfortunately, but I'm actually thinking of getting her into a hanging basket and putting her on the window for the summertime. So maybe that will be something that we do soon. Um, but in the meantime, I've just got her set up with a grow light there. All right, and then moving to the front of the shelf, we have another philodendron Florida ghost here. This is just a cutting from my larger plant up there and it just kind of hangs out here. It doesn't have any support or anything. So I guess she's just growing wild like her mother. We have a jewel orchid back here. This is, I think my only jewel orchid. Um, there's two different varieties in here. This is, I don't know why I can never remember the name of this plant. What are you? Ludicia discolor. Um, and then a variant of that, but I don't know which is which. Anyways, I just call this my jewel orchid. It's really pretty, nice, dark, velvety foliage. And she gives me these cute blooms and she's a winter bloomer. So it's fun to, you know, get these flowers, these like cheerful little flowers pop out around December. And these have been hanging on for so long. I mean, this one is obviously on its way out, but um, she's been in bloom for months now. And it's just, it's so nice. It really does just add <laughs> such a nice energy to the room having those little flowers. This crazy growing Hoya right here is my Hoya chingungensis. And um, this is probably one of the fastest growing Hoya in my collection. It is so, so crazy. I got this as just a small little starter plant. Um, and I've had this for, I mean, I wanna say like a year or just over a year. Um, and it's grown into this massive, massive plant. I made this doll head planter in one of my spooky repot videos for Halloween and she's still living in there, but oh my goodness, it was so much smaller then when I potted it in here. So yeah, it's just crazy how fast it grows. It's putting out new vines all the time too. Like she just keeps getting bushier. She has a peduncle somewhere too. Oh, there's a little one. She has a few peduncles on her right now, actually. I think that the blooms look similar to Hoya Bella blooms on this one. Yeah, she's so cute. Okay, now the sun is coming out. So the weather can't seem to make up its mind today. But next, in the front and center here, we have my pride and joy, my variegated Thanksgiving cactus. This is definitely one of my top, top plants in my collection. This was a wish list plant for me for years before I was able to find one. I was able to trade for one little cutting or little plant originally, and then I traded for two more cuttings. So I combined those three plants into this planter and that's what this has come from. As you can see, I have quite a few, like almost all variegated vines, which I'm not too sure what the longevity of those is going to be like, but they sure are pretty for the moment. And then I also do have other, other ones that have a more balanced variegation to them. I love these like half moon ones that is just so, so pretty. Yeah, just a stunning plant. It has bloomed for me once, I have a whole bunch of cuttings of this going right now actually because this um, fell off of this shelf at one point and a bunch of it broke off so I ended up rooting those up. But yeah, it's doing amazing. We have tons of new growth coming in on her. So yeah, I'm just, I'm fully, fully obsessed with this plant. And then back here we have an alocasia odora. I think that this is the batik variegated version and I'm not sure why, but it's been growing so funky lately. Like the leaves are just shaped so strange. Honestly, maybe I should check it for flat mites. 
um, because it didn't used to grow like that. Like it used to give me these nice sleeves, but it's been two in a row that have just been weird like this. I ended up cutting the other one off. Um, anyways, I might, I may have to investigate that further, but yeah, the variegation on that plant is really beautiful. Right here is my Hoya Shepardii, which is another Hoya that I have had for many years. Um, it usually blooms for me in the spring. However, it is having a bit of a tough time right now. So I don't know how many blooms I'm gonna get this year. Um, I love this one though, also called the String Bean Hoya because it literally looks like little beans. I love the long leaves on this. It is just so stinking cute. Like I said, it's been struggling, so I recently have had to cut quite a bit off of this plant. I do have some propagations going right there, actually, just as insurance cuttings, because this is a Hoya that I really wanna keep in my collection. The blooms are just dainty little white flowers, and they smell really strongly, actually. This used to be in my bedroom at my old place, and like the, it would kind of keep me up at night. It's like the blooms were really, really strong, like floral smelling, um, but yeah, I love her. Right here is my philodendron serpents, which I recently potted up in a video as well. It has some marks on it because it's been undergoing sulfur treatments. I suspected some kind of fungal thing on this, but not entirely sure what was going on. Serpents is just a philodendron that I tend to really struggle with, but I've recently repotted it and got it on a pole, given it like my, um, I don't even know, I should come up with a name for this combo because I do this with a lot of my plants. I have a lot of my plants in this specific setup with like the Molly's mix, this clear houseplant essentials pot, and then my Rousseau pole. And um, they tend to love it. So we'll see what happens with the serpents. And I also put some wet sticks in here and the leaves are literally just shriveling up because they went from like 100% humidity to 50%. But hopefully the like wet stick part, the roots will remain good and it will give me new leaves. I don't know. I knew it was a risk putting them in there, so. I don't recommend doing that. I would transition them to, I would gradually transition them to lower humidity, but obviously I didn't do that. I just skipped ahead and now I'm paying the price. This is the um, Anthurium vitrifolium cuttings I was telling you about. I think that they're like fully rooted in here, just in perlite. Um, I need to repot this whole plant together. That's the mother we were looking at right there. Um, but yeah, it's been doing fine, honestly. I just need to get on top of repotting. It actually started giving me some pretty big leaves. Like, that is pretty massive. It always tends to have some sort of imperfection though, which is kind of annoying. My Anthurium politiflorum doesn't do me dirty like this, but the Viterifolium does for some reason but I like it, so I keep it in my collection anyways. And then as you can see behind here, we have my begonia greenhouse. So I'll open that up and we'll quickly go through those. I did my best to try to weather strip this, but it's surely not perfect. It's maintaining around 80%, it's 79% right now. So I'm happy enough with that. Um, and then I've rigged it up with a grow light as well. So is it like a super full functioning greenhouse? No, but it definitely works to boost humidity. Now these begonias, well, most of these begonias are quite new to me. Basically all of the begonias, except for this one in the corner, came from chlorophylls. So I'll link, I'll link all of my um, like top plant shops or sellers in the description box if you are looking, you know, for any specific plants. So you can go check them out. But anyways, these came from her and they are just, oh my goodness, they are so beautiful. I, I've just been obsessed with these begonias since I got them in December. Some of them I'm still learning the name, so I'll have all of the names on the screen, but I do know some of them. Um, so I guess I'll just start over here in this corner. This is actually one that I've had for quite a while that I just popped in here with uh, my newer ones. This is Begonia Dracopelta. It used to live in a cloche that it outgrew and it, st it was really struggling for a while, but it's starting to bounce back now. I'm getting some really nice new growth. I love how belated it is. It is just such a cool, cool texture. And um, yeah, a really cute and unique little begonia. We have some flowers on it right now too. So she seems to be settling into this little greenhouse nicely. This is, is that my Berkeleyi? Oh my gosh, this one's kind of moldy too. <laughs> That's kind of a problem with this is that I don't have any fans or anything in here. So yeah, I am wanting to repot these soon though. So they're all gonna get new soil and everything. But this is my, yeah, Berkeleyi Dark. Just a little bebe. This is such a cool one, but do I know the name? Absolutely not. Begonia Scapigera. 
Um, really cool, unique, like oval leaves. They're like lime green and then they have like a pinky orange border and petioles. Oh my goodness, the light is so washed out. It's hard to show you guys, but I feel like you need to see how cool this looks. Yeah, it's just such a different one. It honestly reminds me of like a, um, what are they called? Pilea, Pilea peppermoides. Like it has a similar vibe, it's so cool. This is Begonia Muna and it is looking so, so pretty. Oh my goodness, this is one that, it was really suffering for a while after it arrived to me because um, it was growing right against the lid of this cup but I obviously took the lid off and it's completely bounced back, looking gorgeous and even flowering for me. A really, really cool hybrid. I love the like galaxy look of it. This is a no ID begonia, just says begonia dark no ID, and it is indeed dark and super, super beautiful. So I'm excited to watch that one grow out some more. This is begonia rosio punctata, which looks like she has suffered a little bit. Oh my goodness, I can actually like get that out. Boom. We do have a new leaf though, so that's promising, but really cute pink one. I love pink begonias so much. And then I'm not gonna drag it out, but underneath there is just a little baby Sarawak, which those are really popular ones because they get like a blue sheen to them, but obviously mine is just really small, so we'll see what happens. She's kind of tucked under there because I heard that they don't like a lot of light. She gets some light, obviously, but just not like super highlight. This is my Begonia Milano Bellata, which was a huge, huge wish list Begonia for me for years and years. I could not find one. Um, at all here in Canada. Um, so I was just like uh, completely blown away that Amanda from Chlorophylls sent this to me and gifted it to me. That was just so, so generous of her. And I'm so, so excited to be growing this. Look at that little leaf down there. Like, oh my goodness, so um, spiky and hairy. And oh my goodness, such a cool begonia. You can also grow these outside of terrariums. So I'm probably gonna be taking this out after I repot it. Um, well, maybe I'll like slowly acclimatize it because I really don't want anything to happen to this begonia But yeah, I'm so excited to grow that out. This is begonia. I do not know Mora Warhu Another pink one and it's super super cute been doing really well for me. Oh my goodness. I didn't even notice the hairy petioles That is so so cool Wow, I have a new appreciation for her I love that. I love fuzzy petioles. This is Begonia Mirabilis Dragon Wing, I believe. And this one honestly is one of the ones that has been growing the best since I've had it. Like it is just, it's always putting out new leaves. It's completely taken off. And as you can see, we have several flowers on it as well. So yeah, it is just so, so cool. Oh my goodness. I love these just like sharp looking leaves. It's just gorgeous. This is Begonia U038, previously Chloristic de Green. Um, I don't know a ton about Begonia, but that's Chloristic de there. So I guess this used to be considered a type of Chloristic de as well. I don't know, but it's really cool. It has that kind of like toxic look to it, super lime green. It's been growing well for me as well. New leaves there. Um, this is one of my all-time favorites right now. I am so in love with it. I posted this on Valentine's Day because it's so pink. I just had to. This is Begonia Malacosticta, I believe. And I did not have this on my radar before, but I don't know why the heck I didn't because it is so, so cute and it's been such a great grower for me. So I'm really, really thankful to have this one. I just love it. Like I said, we have Chloristicta right here. This was one that was on my wish list as well. Um, it is just so, oh my goodness, I cannot with the pattern and the colors. I just love it. I love it so, so much. So yeah, I, I, I unfortunately knocked off the top leaf um, when I was fiddling around with weather stripping this cabinet and everything. So I'm kind of waiting for new growth to come in, but yeah, she is so, so stunning. I don't know what this is, but wow, it is so pretty and dark. What are you? Oh, this is a hybrid that she did of all these names that I cannot pronounce, but wow, that is so, so pretty. I haven't pulled these out and looked at them in a little while, so it's kind of fun to get kind of like an updated closer look at them. 
This is another one that I can't think of the name off the top of my head. Oh, it's a no ID, that's why. Um, but a really cool one, again, really dark and has a kind of like speckled pattern. Oh my gosh, and a flower too, how cute. Yeah, this is really pretty, but as you can see, it's pretty cramped in there. So I need to, I need to repot these soon. Oh my goodness. Okay, did we go through all of them? I think we did. Uh, yeah, I've just been loving this setup so much. I really wanted to try out some more like kind of terrarium type begonias this year. So I definitely crossed that off of my wish list. <laughs> okay, bye bye little babies. Whoops, girl. Girl. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the plants um, in front of my second window here. This is the double window. And the first one that we're gonna start with is my Monstera Escaletto. This is, I keep saying that so many of these are my favorites, but I just love so many of these plants. Um, this is one of my biggest plants right now though. Um, I guess when it comes to my climbing plants, I have two climbing plants that are like quite big. It's this one and my Epipremnum Cebu Blue over there. Um, but I just appreciate them so much since I lost some of my large climbing plants last year. Um, it's nice to have some that are, you know, still big. <laughs> So yeah, Monstera Escaletto. This is a huge wishlist plant for me and I actually was gifted this by Charmaine from Unplant Parenthood. So I'm so eternally grateful to her for that because yeah, this plant just brings me so, so much joy. I love the big leaves and this isn't even like, this is not even near the leaf size potential that this plant has. These can get absolutely massive, you guys. And like I said, I'm a big fan of Monstera Adansonii. So the fact that I could have the look of an Adansonii, but like a massive climbing one, I was like, sign me up, sign me the frick up. So yeah, um, I really wanted this one and I got it last year, I believe. And it's just grown like a weed. I have it again on a Rousseau moss pole. And this is actually also on a wooden um, Rousseau support, which I have a few of these in my house. Oh yeah. the. Um, Burl Marks Fantasy is also on one, but it's really nice because I strap this guy in um, onto this support and then it's not going to get knocked over or fall down or anything, which was a big problem that I was having with some of my larger climbing plants. And you can also hang them up. So I do have one mounted. I'm supposed to have another one there, but um, I just temporarily don't have one there. It looks much nicer with two of them, but I just don't have like the right size plant to go there at this particular time. Anyways, back to her. Um, she's literally always, always growing, um, continues to size up and bring me so much joy. You can see we're expecting another new leaf right now. And I'm not kidding you guys, whenever it pushes out a leaf, like right after it starts working on another one, it's just continuously growing. So yeah, I love her so, so much. I guess I'll do the lower plants before we do the upper window. All right, so right here, we just have some propagations. This is Manjula Pothos. I'm rooting these so that they can be put on a pole. These are some just insurance cuttings that I have. This is a Syningia leucotrica, which is a caudex plant, the only caudex plant in my collection. And I really wanted this one because it's super fuzzy and cute, but obviously mine looks like poo poo right now because it was the winter and these go dormant in the winter combined with the fact that I do not know how to take care of these. <laughs> so if anyone has any suggestions of what I should do with this right now, like should I cut these leaves off? Should I just let it do its thing? I honestly don't know what to do. I know that these typically grow back in the spring, but I thought it was gonna drop its leaves and then grow back fresh ones, but it's still just hanging on to these janky leaves. It's looked like this for months and I just, I don't know what to do. I've been watering it, but I don't know. So <laughs> I am taking any and all suggestions, please and thank you. Here we have some of my pinguiculas. Maybe I will trade places with these in the camera. Okay, this will work well for the next few minutes actually. So I have a variety of pinguicula in here. I grow all of my pinguicula in like a water reservoir. It's really the only way that I have grown them. So I just stick with what I know, I guess. I have some of them potted in sphagnum moss and some of them potted in um, like a soil mix because that's how they came and I just haven't changed anything. This one from Crystal Star, my pinguicula hanka actually looks like it's in um, perhaps like a pond, 
Um, and it's actually also, this one is so crazy. This is the first pinguicula I've had do this, but it's like splitting into two. Can you see that? Like, oh, oh my, no. Oh, sir, sir. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, the roots are healthy. They have really shallow roots, but they look healthy. Okay, I'm just gonna plop him back in. Oh my goodness. I actually find like pinguicula look, you'd think that they'd be so delicate. They look delicate and they have these shallow root systems, but for some reason they're super hardy. So <laughs> I'm sure he'll be fine. Anyways, this is my pinguicula hanka, which is currently splitting into two. And um, uh, this is a newer one to my collection. I got it specifically for the flower and it actually did end up flowering for me this winter, which is so, so crazy. So um, that was really, really cool to see. And then I have, I have some in here that I don't even know the ID. This one has a tag that says Agnata. Hasn't flowered for me yet. This hasn't flowered for me yet. This is a no ID one as well. Hasn't flowered for me yet. Um, I don't even care what types they are. I'm just so excited to have these and to have them flower one day because I'm so, I just love pinguicula so much. I think that they're so cute. They're so easy going. They're just small, so you can kind of like stick them anywhere. Um, this is a cyclosecta, which is like a purple one. They don't have a ton of color right now. And pinguicula can actually turn like really pink or really purple with, with light exposure. So in the summer, these will probably have a lot more color to them. But um, yeah, this one has some babies in it too. These are really easy to propagate from leaf pulling or they divide and yeah, they're just really cool plants. Not sure what this one is, but I love the like slender leaves on it. Super, super cute. I do need to get them in a better setup. There are really cool pinguicula pots that you can get, like um, Understory Labyrinth makes some just like incredible, like I'm always drooling. I always check out her restocks and I'm just like drooling over them. Um, but unfortunately that shop is in the US and the shipping is $100 to Canada. So I just can't make it happen yet, but maybe one day I'll treat myself um, because yeah, I think it would just be so fun to have a pinguicula in a really beautiful handmade pot like that. All right, I guess I'm just gonna grab a few that are living on this windowsill right next to me here. So this is one of my all time favorite Hoya. It is the Hoya Nicholsonier New Guinea Ghost. It obviously has this really beautiful minty silvery texture, or sorry, not texture, color. It has a really like smooth texture actually, which I really like. This gal has been growing like an absolute weed. And this is actually my second attempt at growing the New Guinea Ghost. I had one, a different one, and it croaked on me and I was so sad about it. And then um, I got this replacement one from Plant Haven Toronto. They sent this to me, which was so, so nice. And um, yeah, I've really been keeping a close eye on it because I do not want to lose this plant again. Um, so yeah, it's just so stunning. Oh my goodness, these can sun stress really, a really beautiful, like honestly, like lavender purple color. It is just so, so exquisite. Like you can see some of the color kind of coming in on those new leaves. It is just, oh my goodness, yeah. I love this Hoya so much. Mine's gonna need to be, I think I might take some cuttings soon once these leaves um, like fully come in so that I can fill it out a bit more because right now it is just one vine. But yeah, I'm just, I'm in love with this plant. <laughs> All right, let's put her back. And yeah, I'm growing her on this south facing window so that she can hopefully get some of that beautiful coloring to her. Next, we have another pinguicula. This is actually my first one. This, is, this was my, um, oops. Sorry, this is my gateway ping because what is my camera trying to focus on? The screen, it's like tracking something weird. Anyways, this was my gateway ping because um, I became obsessed after <laughs> trying this one out. This is Pinguicula morinensis. Super easygoing, turns pink in the summertime from the sun and puts out a cute little flower. And yeah, I just love her so much. She is starting to catch. Now that spring is coming, I am getting a few fungus gnats in here. so. Um, some of my pings are starting to catch, which is really nice for them. Oh my gosh, is she splitting too? <gasps> I think she's splitting, you guys. There's like two on this side, there's a growth. And then on this side, there's another like growth point. So crazy. Oh my gosh, I can literally see a fungus gnat flying around me right now. Okay, and then in this little terrarium enclosure thing, I have a couple more pings. This is another cyclosecta which is the purple one. It will get a lot more purple in the summertime. And then um, a Pinguicula Wesser, 
Weezer, I'm not really sure, but this one I picked because it gets really pink in the sun as well. So she's gonna look stunning within the next few months here. And they've just been living their best lives in there. I have an unboxing of those two. Um, I ordered them from like a local carnivorous plant website. I have a few Monstera Albo cuttings that have been propagating here. So yeah, there's three different little vessels of those. And then here we have another Philodendron Florida Ghost, the third one in my collection. So this one is stunning. Look at how white that is. Um, and this one, this is another import, which came from the same import order that I was talking about earlier. Um, but I'm excited to grow this one out because this is, one's gonna be growing on a moss pole. This is another leaf. Oh my goodness, so white too. Makes me nervous that this is just gonna die off. Um, anyways, growing on a moss pole. So I'm really excited about that because I would love to just have one of these really size up for me and get that really mature leaf shape. So yeah, that'll be really cool to see. She's obviously getting a lot of light in this south facing window. So that's why her leaves are coming out so white, I guess. We have an Epipremnum panatum skeleton key that's been propagating here for way too long. I need to pot these up like ASAP. Another Monstera Albo. This is probably the nicest Monstera Albo cutting that I have. This one is really nice. Both of these. Stunning. If I could get more like this, I'd be happy, but I tend to just get ones that look more like this. <laughs> so, yeah. This little Ikea vessel just has some Marble Queen cuttings in it because like I said, I want to get a Marble Queen on a pole. So those have just been rooting. They're rooted though. I can pot them up anytime. And then this is a special one that's pretty new to my collection. So I'll pull that one out and show you. This is my Syngonium Macrophyllum Frosted Heart, which it has been a plant, a, ha, is a plant that has been on my wish list since the beginning of time, honestly. I've wanted this for years and years and I just for some reason was unable to track one down. Um, but it was recent, recently, why can't I speak right now? It was recently generously gifted to me by Jesse. Um, I'll put his Insta. He sent this on over and oh my goodness, I, I could not be happier. Like, first of all, I just can't even believe that I have this plant in my collection, but to send me like, this full freaking thing, like I could not believe it. It's on a DIY moss pole. And yeah, she's just living her best life. So obviously she settled in super well because she was just, you know, such a beautiful plant to begin with. Um, so I've been dying to give y'all an update on this plant. So I put out this leaf. This is the leaf that was coming out when it was being shipped. So I was kind of expecting it to have some damage and just not be the best leaf, which it actually doesn't look that bad, like for the first leaf for it to put out. And it was actually also the first leaf after being cut. This was a mid cut. Um, so pretty, pretty good. But now we are getting a stunning, like full size, I mean, maybe not full size, but much bigger, like perfectly healthy looking leaf. And I, I have been checking on this every day, you guys, because I am so excited for it to unfurl. It looks beautiful. Like I can get a little sneaky peeky and it looks just perfect. So yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, I'm gonna need to get this on a different pole soon because as you can see, it is at the tippy tippy top. So yeah, but it's been doing amazing. It, the roots are looking healthy and amazing in here. And um, yeah, it's just, it's everything that I could have hoped for. So yeah, I'm just so, so thankful and happy to have this in my collection. And then I thought I might as well just grab the Hoya that was on the end beside it. Um, so I don't have to take you over there again and show you in the backlit spot. But this is my Hoya Obovada, which I actually recently potted in Tupon in this self-watering pot. I love these cute like little cube self-watering pots from Crystal Star Nursery. But I used to have a big Hoya Obovada, okay? And it was living outside for the summer, doing great. And then I don't even know why I cut it up. I, don't, I, think, I think maybe my plants out there were thrippy or maybe it was just too big, I don't know. But I decided to cut it up and um, give it a go in self-watering because I've had a problem with the leaves just coming in misshapen on this. Like I want nice big round leaves like this one, but I just struggle to like continuously get nice leaves like that. And I think it's just because of underwatering. So I figured I would try it in pond and self-watering. So I'm kind of just waiting to see the results from that. So yeah, so far so good. We have some new leaves 
that are trying to come in. So we'll see what happens. Okay, next we're gonna go through my hanging plants on this, um, like specifically these three hanging from the curtain rod. I guess there's four. I'll take them down and show you, but just so you can see from afar in the disco ball, we have my rat tail cactus, my ripsalis. In the middle, that big one is a Thai pink lipstick plant and then my fern leaf cactus. Okay, so to give you a closer look, this first one is my rat tail cactus, which I love so, so much. I love trailing cactus. Um, so yeah, really cute, like slender kind of vines, I guess. And she was actually just in bloom for me. I was hoping that this flower would hang on for the video, but yeah, it's starting to die off, unfortunately. But yeah, such a pretty flower, similar to a holiday cactus flower. And it just looks so, um, it stands out so much, like having this big of a flower in contrast to just the kind of thin um, vine that it's coming off of. So it was quite the eye catcher when it was in full bloom. And then the one that shares the disco ball with the rat tail is my Ripsalis Paradoxa Minor. So this is a thinner kind of type of Ripsalis Paradoxa, I suppose. This has actually grown quite a bit. It's kind of one of those plants that I don't really notice has grown until I like take it down and look at it. And I'm like, oh yeah, wow, you are getting kind of big. Like it's getting pretty long. It goes all the way like, wow. It's getting pretty long. I love Ripsalis Paradoxa. I have the other form, the like larger one or like thicker one as well. So um, it's nice to have both of them because it's just such a beautiful trailing jungle cactus. Okay, next we have a very stunning one, which actually is in bloom right now. It still has the blooms on her. Actually, some of them aren't even open. Did I just knock one off? Oh no, that was a leaf. For some reason this thing, like it's super healthy, but it drops leaves all the time. Like it's one of those plants that you really can't move or touch because it will just drop leaves. Um, somebody messaged me on Instagram about this one the other day and they're talking, or maybe commented and said that there's um, drops leaves all the time. And I was like, honestly, same. So I think it's fine. But this is my Thai pink lipstick plant. And first of all, this plant grows like an absolute beast. Like I cannot even tell you. Um, this was just a tiny small starter plant 15 months ago and it's grown into a full trailing plant. Um, a lot of like the front of the leaves is facing the back of the planter because this is the side that faces the window. So you can see like the growth pattern is so, so pretty. It's one of those trailing plants that has like a really kind of organized look to it. I don't know how else to describe it. Like it just like almost has like a shingling. Like it just, I don't know. I really like the way that it grows. But the really special thing about this plant are these pink blooms on it. Um, lipstick plant flowers can come in all types of different colors. I have one that's yellow. They can also be red, green, orange. Um, but this one is pink and that just makes me so, so happy. So. This is probably, I mean, I do like my other one as well. It gives me beautiful yellow blooms, but oh my goodness, the pink. I just cannot handle that. It's so, so pretty. There's so many on here as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see them all, but it's just covered in blooms. And yeah, it is so gorgeous. It makes me so happy to see this every day. So yeah, definitely one of my favorites when it comes to trailing plants. Okay, next we have this <laughs> large and in charge lady right here. This is my fern leaf cactus. And yeah, I can't believe how massive this thing is getting. It's absolutely crazy and it's still growing and putting out new, like this is like a new branch that it's putting out. It's hard to show, but um, they kind of come out small and then expand into this big like leafy kind of look. But yeah, this is a really cool jungle cactus. I find it super easy going and it loves hot, warm, bright uh, locations. So it tends to really thrive. Like as soon as I moved here, it just, it took off for me. So, so she really is just living it up. And honestly, she can probably go for a repot pretty soon. She just grows so much. She's been super easy and rewarding and she's really just like a statement plant. People always notice this one because it just like, it just takes up so much of the window space and kind of really stands out. So yeah, really cool plant. 
Okay, I had to take this next one down with the pot to show you because the pot is just so stunning and it's really special to me because this was gifted to me by my friend Ashley um, right before I moved actually and it was just such a sweet thoughtful gift and just really like, I don't know, it just reminds me of that time now right before we moved into our home and like the spring vibes and yeah, it's just the cutest little sunshine ever. This was made by O Clay, I think, like A-U. Um, I think anyways, I can link it down below, but yeah, super super cute. I haven't really mentioned much about my other pots. Um, another uh, What are they called? Ceramicist clay Pot potter. I don't know the word. Let's just say artist another artist that I have a few pots from is solarium and I actually have an order another order coming from her with I think three more pots that I purchased because I just could not pass up some of the pieces of her newest collection they were very like the vibe that I like so I can't wait to show you guys those um, but yeah I'll link um, her down below as well there's gonna be a lot of links in the description box okay oh I didn't even talk about the plant <laughs> So the plant in here, let me take it out so that I can kind of show you better. It's just in a nursery pot in here, but I am going to be, oh my gosh. See, I get nervous even like messing around with this string of pearls. I'm kind of scared of them. Um, but I am going to be potting it right into here because there is a drainage hole. Um, probably in the spring, I've just been putting it off because I'm scared I'm going to kill this string of pearls. Um, and I really want like this specific plant in there. I think it's going to look really nice. So I think the spring will be a good time to get it potted directly in there. But this is my string of pearls variegated. If you can see some of the variegated pearls. And this has been doing so, so well. I got this last summer from We Pop Plants and I was really excited to get this because I tried the variegated version of String of Pearls once before and just tried growing it from a little cutting and it croaked on me. So to have another one is just so nice. Um, I love String of Pearls. I think this is just such a cool OG plant and it kind of reminds me of like the 2019 days when the house plant boom was happening and these were super trendy on Instagram. Everybody had one. Um, I don't see a lot of people have String of Pearls anymore, but I do, I have a green one and a variegated one and I love them both. So yeah, she's doing really, really amazing and really enjoying living in the south window. Also look at the cute little beads that this planter has on it. It's just so pretty. Okay, I was hoping to get through a few more plants but it is getting pretty dark out now. So I think I'm gonna call it a day and I will hop back on here tomorrow and we'll film the rest of the tour. Hello and good morning friends. We are back with filming the plant tour. I actually stayed up last night and edited the footage that I filmed yesterday and we're already at like an hour and 20 minutes. So this is gonna be a long video. Um, thank you for sticking with me. I'm gonna try to, yeah, I, I mean, some of the plants won't take that long for me to talk about. I've just, I get really chatty about the ones with a lot of history or just things that I want to mention about them. Um, but yeah, we should be able to fly through a lot of the ones that are left. So we're just going to keep on cracking. The weather is pretty similar to yesterday, kind of cloudy and overcast, but with some sunny breaks. So the lighting should be good. And um, yeah, we're just, we're ready to rock here. Let's go. Okay, we're back at the same window. I'm actually standing on a chair right now to show you a better view of the plants up here. I do have a lot of Hoya on most of this window and I am going to be taking those down to show you a closer look. They do, unfortunately, some of them have thrips right now, which I don't even know why the heck the thrips are up there bothering those Hoya, but anyways, I don't even want to think about it. I don't even want to talk about it. They're undergoing treatment right now. Um, yeah, that's just the thrips and I have become one over the past couple of years. I'm going to start by talking about my string of hearts here. I don't think I'm going to bother taking them down. They're kind of a hassle to move. They get all tangled and stuff, but I have a regular string of hearts, a variegated one and a silver glory string of hearts. I'll give you a close up of their leaves. I mean, the regular one, it isn't really that exciting. The leaves are kind of small. It doesn't really look amazing. I don't know, it's not my favorite right now. But the variegated one has actually been doing really well, uh, despite the fact that it got tangled when I took it down and sprayed it for thrips. I don't think these have thrips, but I just treated all of the plants that were up there. Um, but I am getting some really beautiful hearts on this. 
and blooms, lots of blooms, but just look at how cute that is. I really, really like the variegated version. I do need to untangle this though. I just didn't have time the other day, but look at how pretty that is. I really, really love it. And then the Silver Glory, I'm trying to just give you a little look here. Look at the leaves that I'm getting on this gal. She is doing so, so well. I repotted these a couple of months ago and they've been really happy with their repot and really happy with being in the south window here. Look at those. Like that is just so gorgeous. Yeah, getting really big growth. They just kind of stay there. I honestly don't really do too much with those plants. I just water them whenever they get dry. And now I'm gonna climb up and grab those Hoya down. Okay, so starting off strong, the first Hoya that I'm showing you from up there is my Hoya Chicken Farm. This is one of my favorites. I've had this one for a few years now and I love it because, well, first of all, we get these gorgeous large sized leaves. They're so pretty. They have kind of like minty colored splashing on them, especially when they're fresh. They're just so, so pretty. Or if you have this in cabinet conditions or like a grow tent, the coloring on the leaves is just so vibrant, like just very, um, kind of reminds me of the, um, Crassy Petiolata, but like a big version. Mine kind of lost some of its really nice color when I put it outside for the summer, but nonetheless, it's still gorgeous. And the other thing that I really love about this Hoya is that it blooms for me all the time and pretty much constantly. Uh, this winter I got like between fall and winter, I think I had the, the same peduncle, this big one right here, bloom three times in a row, like back to back. The blooms would fall off and then it would just immediately start pushing out new ones. And I have a whole bunch of different peduncles that are activating on here, which is really cool. This also, oh yeah, there's another one under here. Um, yeah, so she's been a really good bloomer for me. This did have mealybugs. I removed the mealybugs and treated it. And then I also had to spray it down for thrips. Didn't see thrips on this one, but just since it's up there. Also recently repotted her. So I think that this plant is really gonna start to grow for me again because it was just in a terracotta pot that was constantly drying out. And um, I think that it was just not very happy in there. So it's on a much better setup. I upgraded the trellis size and everything. So yeah, I'm hoping that with this growing season, I'm going to see some more leaves and some more blooms on this one. I said I was gonna speed this up a little bit and here I am just talking forever about one plant. Anyways, this is the one that I originally spotted the thrips on the other day, the first one that I saw them on, and I was like, no freaking way. This is my Hoya Multiflora, which I recently uh, potted, repotted. It's living in pond. This has been a really great grower for me, always blooming. I love this Hoya so much. I also got it on this trellis recently, and I'm so happy with this new setup that I have happening here. So I went to check on it the other day because I was like, oh, I wonder how she's faring with her repot and everything. And then I saw freaking thrips crawling on her. And I was like, what in the world? Like that is just bizarre. It is a thin leafed Hoya. So it's definitely like the type of Hoya that thrips would go for. I've had them on my polyneur before too but yeah wasn't impressed with that um anyways she's a trooper she's still looking amazing she has lots of balloons that are um starting to form and yeah she's just one of those hoyas that has always grown despite my neglect and always just put out tons of blooms for me and this is a hoya that i wanted because of the blooms they are like the shooting star kind of blooms and they're just so cute i think she's gonna grow a ton this year and i just i can't wait to see how big i can get this one Next, we have this little cutie here. This one is relatively new to me and I wanted this one for the blooms. This is Hoya Camphorifolia, has really cute pink blooms and I have a thing for pink Hoya flowers or just like cool Hoya flowers in general, but specifically the pink ones I love. Um, and it also has cute little foliage as well. Like I don't mind the foliage, she's so cute and she's been growing just amazingly for me. I obviously have her in this nice setup with the trellis and um, she's actually in Molly's mix. 
I wanted to experiment with it. It's an Aeroid mix, but I wanted to try it out for some of my Hoya and she immediately started growing. I can see lots of happy, healthy roots in there. So that's something that I'm keen to use on more of my Hoya. Also has a cute little name tag cause I kept forgetting her name, but yeah, just, just a little cutie. So hopefully it will get her bigger and bloom in one day. Okay, so next we have my Hoya Quinquinervia. I've had this thing for years now and it's been a really steady grower for me. Apparently these can also sun stress really nice, but I've never managed to get sun stressing on mine. I don't know why that is, but now since it's living in that top window there, it's gonna be in pretty much full sun. So I can't imagine it's not gonna get sun stressed. Like it has to, right? <laughs> I'm gonna give up on sun stressing if that freaking window can't sun stress this plant. But um, yeah, it's doing amazing. This is the other Hoya that I found thrips on, unfortunately, and I just removed a dead one, but that tells me that the treatment has worked or is working, which is good. And he doesn't seem too bothered by it. I mean, this is a really thick leaf, like this is hard as a rock. So I can't imagine that thrips would really be doing too much damage to this plant. But yeah, he doesn't seem bothered. We have some new leaves that I just noticed coming in right there and then we also have new vines activating up here i recently repotted all of these hoya that i'm showing you so they're all in like a fresh mix fertilizer this like crisscross trellis situation so um yeah they are very happy okay next we have my hoya kaimuki which has these beautiful like slender um really dark leaves this is actually a Hoya that I've had for quite a while, but it's suffered a lot of neglect in the years that I've had it. And just recently I've kind of been like, okay, well, I've recently experienced like a revival in my love for Hoya. So now I'm kind of babying all of the ones that I've had for a while that maybe have been neglected for <laughs> quite some time. Um, so this is one of them that I'm like, okay, we need to be serious now, okay? Because I wanna see some new leaves. I wanna see some blooms. That, that would be freaking amazing, who knows? Yeah, so I'm trying to stay on top of watering this one. It's getting tons of light. I think it's happy. I recently cut off, it had so many crazy tendrils and I was just like, mm, no, we're not doing that. They had them forever and it was not putting out leaves. So I gave it a trim and we actually have a new vine that is coming out right there. So we'll see what happens with that. And I had run out of my big trellises. So this is just on small ones, but I need to switch these out for the larger size so that it fits the pot and it can accommodate the new vines and everything. But yeah, Hoya Kaimuki. Okay, next we are gonna talk about my baby here, which is this long trailing Hoya Linearis. This is my number one favorite Hoya. I just love the way it cascades. I got this as just like a tiny little plant back in, oh, I don't know, 2019 or 2020. And um, I originally, I was like chopping it and selling a bunch of cuttings. I used to kind of sell like some of my cuttings on Facebook and stuff. I don't really as much anymore. But after I did that for a while, I decided to finally start growing it out. And ever since then, I've just spent the past couple of years chopping, propping, adding cuttings back into the top of the pot and just trying to get this to be as lush as possible because I really love when people just have super full trailing linearis that has always been my dream and I feel like I'm finally getting close to having my dream plant. It is super, super long. Um, like I really need to trim this soon and get some cuttings back into the top of the pot because like this is gonna be touching the floor super soon. And this is like, it is high up there, you guys. These are 11 foot ceilings and it's only a few feet from the ceiling. So um, yeah, it's a very, very long plant, but it's doing amazing. It loves living in this spot. As soon as we moved in here, I just kind of set it up there because I didn't really have somewhere to put it yet where it was gonna be able to um, trail. So I just stuck it up there and it did really well. So I've just left it up there ever since. And I just love it. it. Like it adds just like, oh, just such a cool look. It is such a unique plant. I cannot recommend Hoya Linearis enough. Over the past few months, I've gotten a few peduncles on it, but none of them have ever come to fruition and given me blooms, which is kind of unfortunate, but I'm hopeful that I'm gonna get blooms from it one day. I would just be, wow, I would be over the moon. <laughs> Whenever that happens, um, you guys will definitely be hearing about it and seeing it, of course. But yeah, just such a wonderful plant and super easy going. 
Okay, now we're gonna talk about the plants in this area. I have this shelf right here, which is from Ikea. I really like it. I am gonna move this light out of the way just so that we can get in there better. Um, but I think we're actually gonna start with the plant that I have up on the wall there, which is my Philodendron Glorious. So let me go and pull her down. All right, so here she is. And if you watched my last, I think it was my last video that I would have posted. Um, it was a day of caring for my philodendron, like a philodendron themed plant chore video. We actually extended the pole um, on her in that video. So you would have seen her. She's doing really, really well. This plant is just finally starting to get reestablished. These were cuttings that I took of my, I guess, yeah, I, t I cut up my old one and then rooted the cuttings and I've potted the cuttings into here and I did it in the middle of winter. So they kind of took their time establishing, but now they're really starting to get going. These leaves up here at the top are new. They're still hardening off and they had some trouble unfurling. So they came out looking kind of yellow and I was hoping that they would end up darkening up and they have, they're looking really, really good. So yeah, they're gonna get even darker yet. They're still soft. And then we have another new leaf coming in down there. I believe that I potted three separate plants in here. So I'm hoping that she's going to really start to size up for me again. The leaves are down here were pretty big, but we have to get reestablished, you know? Okay, here we have one of my favorite climbing plants and that is my Cebu Blue, Epipremnum pinnatum, Cebu Blue. And um, I am actually going to be chopping and extending her soon because she's literally at the very top. And this is about six feet tall right now. So I don't think I'm gonna extend it again. Um, gonna just chop it and I'm pretty happy. I mean, she did kind of get stunted for a little bit because she had a fall. I ended up removing the leaf that was really damaged, but that was definitely a bit of a setback. However, we are starting to size up again here. This one isn't even hardened off yet, but it's a pretty decent size and it's so, so pretty. I just love, love, love the leaves on this plant. Just gorgeous. And this is another one that as soon as it puts out a leaf, it's already working on the next one. So you can see that up there. So yeah, I'm looking forward to chopping it and um, adding another pole and just continuing to grow it out. I'm really curious on how that's gonna go and I'm probably gonna do it next week. So that's gonna be really fun. You can see that she started down here from just small juvenile little leaves. Like it's so crazy, just the transformation that can be made. There's also a secondary vine on here too, which is, right here that's the newest leaf it's starting to fenestrate too so that's very very cute i don't know what i'm gonna do with the base of this plant honestly but yeah i love her she's one of my big girls and it just makes me so happy to see her especially with the linearis i love all these plants so much what can i say and now going over this plant shelf, it is a little bit chaotic. This plant shelf used to look really, really nice because it used to house a lot of my mid-sized poles that were pretty lush and full. Um, and then I ended up taking apart all of those poles and having to restart plants and stuff. And I'm just kind of at an awkward phase where I don't have necessarily the plants like at the size that they need to be to make that setup work again, if that makes any sense. So it's just kind of housing some random plants here for now, mostly just for lighting purposes, because I do have this tree lamp shining onto this shelf. So these plants are able to get a good amount of light. Anyways, let me move some of these out of the way. So back here in the corner, we have my Amadurium Medium Silver, which is honestly kind of suffering some neglect now. I mean, it's not really suffering yet, but I'm in my, my like my mindset towards this plant is kind of neglectful at this point because it was doing this weird browning thing over the winter. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you probably heard about that because I've mentioned it a few times. I was so frustrated by it, could not figure out what was causing the issue. I've had this plant for years and it's always been a great grower for me. And then out of the blue, it just started this browning issue and I was losing all of the leaves. So most recently I've chopped it and restarted it, new potting mix and everything. It does have a runner that's going up here. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's not doing anything. And I'm just kind of like, uh, kind of feeling over it, I guess. But I do still really want to see it do well. So hopefully it just starts getting happy again now that spring is coming. But yeah, we'll kind of see what happens with her. 
she used to look amazing so it's really sad that she's had a bit of a downfall this big gal in the back here is my alocasia michaeliziana this is one of my favorite alocasia to grow just like based on the look like i love these leaves so incredibly much the dark velvetyness with the striking veins and just the sheer size that they can get mine isn't a very mature one yet like these can get really huge i think that they are just so so stunning like probably one of the prettiest alocasia that you can grow but unfortunately it is one of my more finicky ones so we've definitely had our ups and downs and it's doing okay right now but it does look like these leaves are kind of starting to yellow so who knows what the future is going to bring there is a new leaf behind here though which looks really nice so um she's not doing too badly because she's still growing next to her is my philodendron red anderson which has been doing really really well but it recently put out this leaf with a huge chunk of white variegation which seems to be suffering if you can see that it looks like it's going to start browning off um but the other leaves are so so pretty like look at that if I could get more leaves that have this kind of variegation with the pink and the mint, oh, it is so, so pretty. I really love this plant. I recently took it out of the cabinet, so I'm hoping that it's just gonna start growing really well for me. Besides this situation, we do already have a new leaf coming in. This bowl needs to be extended as well. I'm gonna be doing that this week. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a plant that sometimes it struggles and some, sometimes it gives me a really pretty leaf. It just kind of, kind of depends. Down here is my begonia lyallii. Um, or my cilantro begonia as I like to call it. It's so cute. I love the leafy, like ruffled <laughs> leafy. What a great descriptor for foliage. Um, but yeah, I love the shape of the leaves. It's such a unique begonia. Mine is looking kind of pale, so I did just fertilize it, but yeah, we will see how she does. I mean, she's been hanging on for a while. She's living in the crystal star pond in there. And then while we're down here, we have my regular green string of pearls, which is looking so cute. This has been growing really well for me. I've had it for since last summer, I think. Um, and yeah, it's been doing great. It's also in this cutie little painted pot. So yeah, I love this one. And then taking up this whole corner here is my Monstera Aurea, which I've had a very hectic time with. Um, it does this thing where it constantly browns the yellow parts of the leaves and I could not figure out how to stop it. Different lighting conditions didn't help, different like trying to keep up with the watering didn't help. Nothing seemed to resolve this. Um, so I ended up chopping it up and uh, rooting the cuttings and then sticking them into pond in a self-watering pot. So that's its current setup. And we actually have the first new leaf since I converted it to pond emerging right now. So I am waiting with bated breath to see this new leaf and to see if it's going to do the browning thing for me. I'm really hoping that semi-hydro is my solution, but obviously I don't know yet. I do have several other growth points that are starting to come in as well, but yeah, that is the first official new leaf. And Monstera aurea is a really fun one. This is why I, I really want to just be able to figure this plant out because I do love it. And my, and this particular specimen is just gorgeous. Like the variegation is, oh, it's perfect. Like it's so, so pretty, so highly variegated. Um, but I really want to figure out how to grow this because it's Polaroid variegation, which I love. So the leaf comes in just green and then over time the variegation becomes apparent. I've also started foliar feeding this with a silica. Um, so that's supposed to also be something that helps to prevent browning, although I've heard different thoughts on it so i'm just kind of experimenting with that but yeah i'm trying trying to figure this girl out and then behind her we have some philodendron majestic cuttings now these used to be a massive plant that was living in this corner here covering up that paint wall situation there um and it was so so beautiful oh my goodness i miss having my big majestic i saw a clip of it the other day and i was like oh i'm so sad i can't wait until i can grow this plant out again but it just it just got so big and unruly and the bottom leaves started yellowing and the whole thing just didn't look great and i should have 
kept up with the pole watering. The thing is on like a thin thickly pole and I just couldn't keep up with watering it and so therefore I couldn't like do a chop and extend. But um, I'm going to get this on a Rousseau pole and then really keep up with it and be able to, um, you know, maintain having this as a decent sized plant in my house because this is one of my favorite philodendron. It just looks so pretty in the sun. The silver on the leaves, like look at how shiny. It's so satiny and sparkly and the backs are red and it just, it has just such wonderful traits from its parents. So yeah, one of my favorite philodendron and I cannot wait to have it back in action. And then this one that I moved out of the way is my philodendron orange marmalade, which was my top wish list philodendron of 2023. And I was able to get this through a trade. Look at the newest leaf, like, are you kidding me? That orange is just so, so stunning. I've heard this plant go by a few different names. I call it orange marmalade, but I've also heard it called autumn queen and um, what is it? Quad color, I think. But yeah, really gorgeous. Has the like mottled kind of variegation on it. And then the new leaves obviously come in really bright and orange. And um, yeah, it's just so stunning. These can get really, really big. So I'm so excited to be growing this out. It's well rooted into the pole. Look at the roots coming out the top there. Oh my goodness, so crazy. All right, so now moving down to my little cactus and succulent area. Um, I just watered these the other day, so it was fun to kind of do a little check-in on all of them and they're doing quite well. So here at the front, we have some of my variegated Thanksgiving cactus cuttings that I was talking about. I ended up losing some of them like this one. This is still in here cause it's still rooted. So I'm like, I don't know, maybe it'll shoot out growth or something. I don't think so, but um, yeah, <laughs> most of them survived. So I'm very grateful for that. And some of them even are trying to flower, which is cool. But yeah, I'm really just happy to have saved any cuttings from when my mother plant fell. And then right here we have this little gal. What is this? This is Haworthia retusa, a variegated one. And this thing took forever to root for me. I mean, probably because it's just so um variegated like it doesn't have a lot of green on it but i know that it does have a root in there wait it does have a root in there oh my gosh now i've moved it i couldn't see the root but now i see it okay it does have a root in there so i'm just gonna leave it i really want this thing to survive it's one of these cool succulents that looks like kind of clear i don't know i really really like it if it can root a little bit more, then hopefully I can put it outside over the summer and it will grow nicely. Down here, we have some more little babies. Um, this is Haworthia obtusa, little cutie right there. That one took a while to root for me as well, but now it's really rooted. And then these, I love these little guys, like these black ones especially. They are, what even are they? What even are you? Oh my gosh, this is the funny thing about this like situation because I have this Hawernia there and then I set these pots on top because there was just all this extra room but now these pots have like rooted their slots on the bottom and they've rooted through and into, look at that, you can see the root coming out of that one and they've rooted into that bottom one. Um, but this is Crassula perforata variegata. So is that these ones I think? And then Sinocrassula Yananensis. Oh my goodness, I'm so unfamiliar with succulent names. All I know is that I like them and I think they're cute, but I don't really know too much about them or how to say the names or anything. But yeah, little babies. I'll definitely be putting those outside this summer as well. Back here, we have a variegated Hawernia and also a regular, let me move this, a regular green Hawernia, which is growing out of control. I'm gonna be doing my annual cactus and succulent repot. I do it every spring on my channel um, because these plants always need to be upgraded because they just grow so much over the summer. But these are also called the lifesaver plant or the butthole plant, depending on who you ask. But they put out these crazy blooms that look like lifesavers. The variegated one has never bloomed for me, but this one blooms um, fr pretty frequently throughout the summer. So it's very, very cool to see. And they're one of those weird stinky blooms that attract flies. 
And then right there, speaking of stinky blooms, <laughs> this is a stapelia. This is actually a stapelia gigantea. And, um, oh, it's kind of crazy. Like it's like growing so, so crazy. But this particular stapelia has never bloomed for me, the gigantea. However, I do have another one um, that we'll see a little bit later that has bloomed for me. And they put out these really like epic starfish flowers that are stinky. This one puts out like a giant version of it. So when that blooms for me, I'll be really excited to see. Oh no. Oh, why is this happening to me again? It's my fault for having such a precarious setup here. Gosh. These poor things have just been through the ringer. Anyway, so I'll have to deal with that after. Let's just pretend that that didn't happen. Okay, so right here we have this uh, like fuzzy silvery succulent that I never remember the name of, but it's very cute and it's doing really well. It looked like it was gonna croak in the fall, but it's totally bounced back under the grow light here. And then we have my lavender pebble succulent, which is pretty new to me. This is gonna be my first like growing season with it because I got it in the fall last year. So yeah, I'm excited to get that outside and see some really nice color on it. This is my newest cactus and probably one of my most exciting ones in my collection. I got this from Plant Haven Toronto recently. It's the Sirius Spiralis, is that what it's called? Sirius for Bessie I. Spiralis, um, obviously a really cool spiral cactus. And um, I'm obsessed with these. I've always loved them. I used to have a different variety of spiral cactus, I think, and it was nowhere near as like twisty and cool looking as this one. I ended up getting rid of that one uh, during one of my moves, but I'm so excited to have another uh, spiral cactus. And this one is just like such a beautiful specimen. So yeah really really cool and then back there we have my euphorbia white ghost and i was actually really excited to when i pulled this out to water it the other day because we have a brand new arm on it which is this one right here this is brand new growth which is so so cool because this thing grows like a literal snail for me it is so so slow and soltec lights are the only grow lights that i can get this to grow under i am going to be putting that outside for the spring and summer but um, yeah, it's so cool that I was able to get a new arm on this. It's just such a weird plant. I love it so much. And then right here we have my variegated bear paw succulent. Now bear paw is like an OG plant that I've had in my collection. I had just a regular green one for years and I loved it. It would even bloom for me. It was so, so cool. Now I just have this variegated one and I kind of regretted that. I Sometimes I do this thing where I'll have the green version of a plant and I'll love it so much that, that I'll get really excited about getting the variegated one. And then I'll just end up getting rid of the green one and just keeping the variegated one. But then I regret it because the variegated ones never grow as well as the green version um so this one really suffered for a while especially when there's a heat wave it just i don't know it just does not like that so it was looking pretty shite but it's really bounced back and it's crazy that it's been bouncing back so much throughout the winter like it's had a winter glow up which is so so crazy but it's definitely um because it's enjoyed being under the grow light so much and it's obviously like really close to it. So it's living its best freaking life. There's so many new paws coming in everywhere. It is looking plump and healthy. And yeah, it's just the cutest thing ever. And a fun fact about the bear paw succulent is that it actually smells like honey, which is just like so crazy and so cute. So yeah, if you have one, you can give it a sniff and see if yours smells like honey. Yeah, mine literally, it smells exactly like honey. Such a cool plant. I really wanna experiment with trying to propagate this, but I'm nervous. I don't think that they prop well by leaf, so you have to take stem cuttings. So maybe I'll do a little experiment this growing season. This is Philodendron Chironiae cuttings, but I do have a mother plant, so we'll talk about that more later. And back here are my Epipremnum pinnatum albo cuttings rooting. Um, this plant, it has been propagation for a while, but I'm gonna be potting it up soon. Um, I got this for pretty cheap from my local garden center, but unfortunately it was thrippy or another plant that I got at the same time was thrippy. So this one ended up getting quarantined as well, but it's gone through its recovery. It's been chopped and it's ready to be potted and given a pole. So I am excited about that one. I love that plant. Like I've never grown any it to any type of maturity but when i see other people's i just i really really love the look of them 
And then here, the last one on my shelf is my Eve's Pin Succulent. And I really like this one. It's so cool and it's super, super tolerant. I had this living outside last summer and it loved it, but it's also just been like very low key, just kind of chilling on the back of this shelf over the winter and not complaining at all. So yeah, I'm excited to get it repotted this spring and get it back outside. I think that my cactus and succulents are going to be the only plants that I'm putting outside this summer because it was just too much of an ordeal to have um, like my aeroids and Hoya and stuff outside last year. So um, it'll be fun to get these guys out and to have some plants out there to enjoy and they just like really benefit from being outside. So and they're like more pest resistant and stuff. So yeah, these will be going outside, but these are probably going to be the only ones that are going outside. Okay, and then down here next to that shelf, we have my Monstera dubia, which is shingling up a plank. This is the only plant that I have living on a plank. It's the only one that I really want to grow on a plank. I think it works really well because it just kind of like lays really flat and looks cool on here. Would this grow better on a moss pole? Probably, but I just, I don't know. I kind of like growing it this way. So that's what I'm doing. I think it needs to be repotted. It's not looking its best. It's definitely looked better in the past, but I think it's starting to do a little bit better. I, I think that one of the things that was really making it unhappy was the cold temperatures throughout the winter. This used to be in the bedroom and I moved it out here. And since I moved it out here and it's warmer, um, it's been growing better. So we have another new leaf, which looks like it's gonna be a decent size too. So I'm excited to see that. And I've just been kind of like slowly guiding it with um, tape to get back onto the plank because it's obviously like veering off to one side. And I've just moved this light a little bit closer because it doesn't have a ton of silver. So I'm hoping to bring back some of that silver and that's happened to me in the past. It's no, nowhere near mature enough to be losing its silver. So it should still have a lot of silver. So I think it just needs some more light. Kind of a work in progress plant. It used to look a lot better, but I ended up cutting it back and I've just been growing it from cuttings. This was like the original leaf down here, which was a pretty good size and nice and silver. So hopefully we get back to there again one day. And then I just have my Viracosum, which is another one of my plants that I've started on a wire pole. This is one that I'm so excited to grow out again. Philodendron Viracosum is one of my all time favorite philodendrons. I just think that they're so cool. They have just so many incredible traits. Like how could you not love it? We have fuzzy petioles. We have a nice velvety, like shiny leaf. Um, and then we have colorful backs. Well, we should have colorful backs, but mine isn't super, <laughs> this isn't the best example right now because it's in kind of like rehab mode, but oh my goodness, these are such pretty plants. And I like that the leaves are kind of like almost like wavy or like ruffled looking when they're big. And yeah, it's just, oh, so, so pretty. They almost have like a blue sheen to them as well. Gorgeous, just gorgeous. Um, this one is just starting to reach the pole. So I've just added this uh, garden Velcro there and hopefully it's going to root in soon and start climbing because I'm just I'm so eager to see it So I'll definitely be giving you guys lots of updates on this one And then while I'm down here on the floor I'm just gonna quickly talk about my calathea that's beside my Millsbo tall Oh my goodness the weather stripping is like all janky on this right now Maybe that's why it's not holding humidity super well right now. I'll have to fix that later Anyways, this is my Calathea rufa barba, otherwise known as the feather Calathea because it is nice and soft and fuzzy. Um, I only have two Calathea and they are both fuzzy varieties. So it's definitely a trait that I really appreciate in them. This one is so, well, I mean, it used to be a lot more, uh, I mean, I don't know if it was more full, but it was definitely healthier before. I moved it out of the office into here. And I think just like the higher light and temperatures really just, it had a bit of a hard time adapting and I've also had to adapt to watering it much, much more. So we've definitely suffered some crispy leaves in the past couple of months, but I think we're figuring each other out. And I, and I think that I'm gonna end up putting this into self-watering into pond like my other Calathea because I've been having really good luck with that. And that's gonna resolve some of my issues that I'm having. So I just need to find the time to um, get all the soil off of this and convert it to water and everything first. I'm gonna have a whole video coming out in, I guess this month in March about converting my other Calathea to pond. So keep your eye out for that. But yeah, she's so pretty. I love this Calathea, it's just gorgeous. And I got this for like $12 at the grocery store last summer. 
Hello everybody, coming at you live from my editing studio, aka my couch, uh, to let you know that this plant tour is going to be continued in a part tour, er, in a part tour, oh my gosh, it's been a long day working on this y'all, in a part two, because my laptop does not have the capacity to edit any further than this two hour video, so um, yeah, I'm running out of space and I'm not going to be able to export it. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be a part two. I guess it's just going to be like a plant tour themed week because you're going to get both parts this week, Monday and Thursday. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to come back uh, for part two on Thursday. We're going to go through my Millsbow tall cabinet, all of my Bits Show shelf, the office and the bedroom. So I will see you in the next part.